don't make unnecessary journeys. Actually, now with the weather resistant Pamapod, you can make unnecessary journeys at any time of the day. Coming from Team 6 News Live, it has been two months since the Pamapod fleet launched in Waterford, making the oldest city in Ireland one of the global leaders for innovative, sustainable and affordable mobility. The driverless amphibious travel pod was created to improve travel for students in the area and has since become a hit with people from all walks of life. Commuters have options now, either travel with others in one of the bigger scheduled pods or book your own pod on demand through the app. Head to one of the designated docking stations and away you go. Today we caught up with some locals to see how Pamapod has impacted their daily life. I have more freedom to see my friends from college. It really shortens the journey times to work. I love it, it's quick and handy to get to college now. Palapod. Palapod. What's that? The route currently covers Dunmore East to Carrick on shore on water and Merchants Quay being the centre hub taking passengers as far as Setu campus by land. By 2030, Pama hopes to extend existing routes to reach Dungarvan, New Ross, Clonmel with stops such as Tremor and Bunmahan along the way. Today we catch up with the team behind Palmapod to find out where it all began. Team 6, Tracy to Diagrams will outline how we went about understanding our research. My name is Mary and I will focus on research findings. Aziza will describe our persona and customer journey map. Patrick will relay our ideas and prototype. Ali will speak about how we tested our product through market research. Within the understand phase of our design challenge, we undertook a detailed journey to understand the concept of smart cities and the pillars of smart mobility and living. From this, we identified a lack of adequate and reliable public transport in Waterford as a key issue. As part of this process, we conducted research and foresight, which provided us with insightful information on macro and micro trends, focusing on car-free cities and water-based public transport. This led us to undertake further research through surveys and interviews with the public in Waterford. Following this, we mapped stakeholders to identify stakeholders connected to or with an influence on transport and mobility. In order to understand the research findings, we conducted semantic analysis, identifying future transport trends. Linked back to our research, we developed a persona and built a customer journey map, focusing on day in the life of Quiva, an SETU student. Finally, we processed all our findings using a funnel, which narrowed down our focus to water transport and maximizing the use of the river shore. I will now hand you over to Mary to take you through our observe phase. From our first meeting, we decided as a team we would spend 80% of our time in the problem space as applied to the Hassan & Thatcher model. Our main aim was to create reliable public transport links to the culture of the city while also considering UN sustainability development goals. To research on smart global cities, I relayed key macro trends on smart mobility. This resulted in each team member individually researching one of these key trends from a global perspective, which gave the team a thorough understanding of smart mobility. Our team members also focused on secondary and primary research on Waterford City. Through governmental documentation research, we gained insights into Waterford's transport system and future strategies for the region. These are related to our team that through social media platforms, Twitter, public transport customers in Waterford found its bus service unreliable. Patrick took the streets of Waterford to conduct primary research. The public did fill out a qualitative questionnaire, however, no member of the public wanted to undergo an interview with Patrick. Patrick, however, conducted two detailed interviews with students using qualitative, open-ended questions which helped our team to get insights into the students' issues with the public, transport. These insights were achieved by human-centred stories on our factual persona. This resulted in Aziz illustrating a mapping journey of the student through a daily timetable. This helped our team identify with a person and bring our story to the forefront. Aziz will now discuss Quiva's journey. Thank you, Mary. Uh, my name is Aziza. I'm going to take you through our point of view phase. So we started this off with three big pieces of information. At this stage, we also decided to hone in on Quiva. And while we had all of this information, it still wasn't enough for us to be able to get a meaningful and actionable problem statement. So we needed to go further. So to delve further, we decided to get our hands into some timetables. We took a student timetable, bus timetable and a society schedule. And with that came this very ugly but very detailed Excel spreadsheet where we took ourselves on Quiva's journey every single day for an entire week, mapped out hour by hour what she was getting up to, how long she was spending in classes, on transport, and how much every day was costing her. This uncovered a lot that we had not seen before, and while this list could go on and on, 
the main things were 20 hours of her week were being taken from a 20 minute journey 20 hours were being spent on travel she was losing time with friends she was losing sleep she was losing passion so what we presumed on the surface was just frustration when we delved into the pain and gain points we saw that there was so much more underneath that and Quiva became a person to us that we had actually seen so many times in our own lives from friends family colleagues and ourselves who have felt similar things true unorganized and unfrequent mobility in Ireland. So then we started to ask, how might we help? How could we help Quiva and others? And that's where Patrick, my team, might come in and explain further. Thank you, Aziza. I will now talk us through the ideate stage. In this stage, we were able to develop and expand ideas we've had throughout the process fully. We use Jamboard to propose numerous how might we statements for meeting Quiva. A recurring theme occurred in which our how might we's were often overlapping. For example, if we pondered improving mindset, this may have also subsequently improved social life, well-being, finances, etc. Um, so then we quickly realised that if we introduce the right question, we can improve more than the lives of just Quiva and other fellow students. Before moving forward, we also had to take Waterford's cultural identity into consideration. Waterford is Ireland's oldest city and was founded by the Vikings in the 9th century. It also happens to be my place of birth, but just putting that out there. This city started because of its river. What better way to move forward than the utilisation of said river? With all this in mind, we've reached our how might we question. How might we design holistic, high-speed water-based transport for commuters in Waterford? After much deliberation and a unanimous vote, we chose, drumroll, da -da 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 -da, travel pods. Pods that can not only traverse water, but also land. These pods are being suggested as a replacement for current public transport. It aims to be greener and more efficient. We have proposed routes for early, mid and late stage development. Once this decision was ratified, we quickly moved into the prototyping phase. We decided to each create our own versions of the travel pod and then as a group combine ideas and choose the fi one final medium. To stop us from creating too vague or too specific a prototype, we created a list of features that the travel pod needed to have in order to represent the group's vision and ideals. Some examples of these features are automated driving, electrical, minimalistic, environmentally friendly, etc. As can be seen on the slide, our prototypes range from sketches, Lego, 3D models, construction, conceptual images, all giving a unique perspective on our visions for the travel pod. Ultimately, we decided to use Minecraft as our final medium for the prototype. Minecraft allowed us to develop our prototype of blue sky thinking, little to no limitations on what we could create. It allowed us to convey our idea in a low fidelity and clear manner. And it was very fun to use. Now on to Ali to take us home. Testing was a crucial phase of our prototype. This is when the rubber meets the road. We presented our prototype to our three users. User one and two has similar reactions and feedback, which was regarding affordability, accessibility, and environmental sustainability. We did refinement based on the feedback. User three, the initial reaction was, wow, futuristic, slick design, and we'll definitely use it. So those were our initial reaction when we presented our prototype. User three has, however, some concerns like safety, weatherproof, and hygienic conditions. We again did our refinement based on the feedback. And what we did, we take those feedback, we try to put it in our smart board. Those were driverless. For example, we need, we need the technology like GPS, sonar, radar, lidar, odometry, those technology which makes a driverless smart board possible. Then we have control center for reporting accidents or any kind of problem with the board. So that would be quick help when there is some problems occurring to the smart board. Then there will be electrical, uh, solar or water current based fuel which is uh, more like a sustainable transport. And there will be charging points and the route map connected with GPS to navigate through the system. So those were the uh, feedback that we included in our uh, prototypes and finally make it as a final prototype. So that's all with the Palmer board. Any questions? Thank you.